Well, today on Nation, we're talking about how to keep your employees happy. And regardless, if you have employees or you don't, this could definitely be a good episode for you to pick up a thing or two. So stay tuned to WCR Nation. What's up, everybody? Jersey here from WCRWindowCleaner.com, window cleaning resource, and you're here. What's up? This is the podcast made for window cleaning companies and any other service business. Uh, we focus on only the business side of things. I'm never going to show you how to squeegee. It's just not my thing. There's lots of channels you can watch to do that. This just isn't one of them. So thank you for coming and hanging out with us. Uh, if you are new here, have a look around. We have hundred and one, almost 130 episodes of this. It's weekly. It's been going on for years. Go listen. Go follow. Watch it on YouTube, listen to it on any podcast platform, and most importantly, comment, thumbs up, review, and uh, doubly important, get your supplies from me. That's right. I am a rep for window cleaning resource. Anything pressure washing and window cleaning related, you can order through me. It costs you nothing extra, but it gives me a little ching, and uh, that's how I make my money. So if you would like to let me eat, I don't necessarily need to eat for a while, but if you want, you certainly can. Uh, give me a call. My number is 862-312-2026. That's my cell phone. Keep it. Save it. Jersey is my name. I am your rep and want to be your rep. I want to be all of your reps. I want to put all of your orders in forever. So please do let me uh, do that. Big or small, that does not matter. Um, and secondly... If you want to leave a review, if you've ever had service with me and you loved it or liked it or it just tolerated it, it was halfway decent, go to windowcleaner.com forward slash review, click on the Google review and uh, leave a review with my name in it and I also get credit for that. Look at all those ways, all those virtual high fives and hugs and like bro bashes and everything else. No, go and do that. But... Today's episode, we are focusing on employees. Now, even if you don't have employees, which some of you don't, and that's cool, do your thing, man. But if you don't have employees, that's still fine. You may be able to pick up a thing or two from this just in case the employee thing ever does come on. Just human relations in general makes um, kind of HR stuff is valuable regardless. And I know it sometimes can be boring, but you're here listening and learning and you're getting yourself better than the next guy beside you who's not. So first off, I give you a, a super high five for that. But with employees, there's a few things to remember. The hardest, hardest thing to get over when you first start having employees is that employees aren't you. They're not your spouse. They're not your kids. They're not anybody who gives two dumps about your company to any close, any way close to the degree you do. Now, your company is your baby. We've talked about that, right? When they first start off, it needs all of your attention. You just got to do everything, feed it, or it will die. If you don't, lots of sleepless nights, lots of uh, you know, spit up on your shirt when things aren't going quite right, right? Uh, and then eventually it gets a little bit easier, becomes a toddler, which you still got to keep your eye on it, but it kind of does its own thing. If you don't keep your eye on it, it pulls a VCR or DVD player off a shelf. And then all of a sudden it gets to be a uh, mature teen that's just running itself. And it doesn't even really necessarily need your help because it's just going. You can do other things and focus on different aspects of the company. And then eventually if you do decide to sell it, it's just like your kid getting married. All of a sudden they are with somebody else. But everything that you did to create it is still there, right? That is the analogy for business. Now, when employees come into it, if you're building something to sell, uh, the route, the customer list, the workflow, all of that does have some value. But if you have employees and you build a company, the company then can be sold as a company, which is super valuable. That's what I did. Uh, I sold my company. Uh, now it has been all of uh, two months since it's been complete um, and that's exactly it like it's there it does its thing it was created and somebody else now is loving it so that's kind of the thing and employees are a very big part of that now if you just want to do this on your own you're making more money than I am with employees that's just the fact uh, per hour when you earn a dollar you keep a dollar 
Um, but you can't really grow or scale if it's just you. So employees are one of those things that if you ever contemplate and think about it, this year, when I'm recording this, it is November of 2019. Going into the slow season in the winter, it may be something to definitely think about what you want to do, adding employees uh, or not. But either way, keeping an employee who does not care about your company the way that you do, happy is very hard. And I always get people kind of yell at me. And by the way, anything I say on this, I'm just some dude. I don't know anything more than you. Uh, I'm just some dude with a mic, right? But if you ever hear anything that you don't agree with or you do agree with, comment. Go to YouTube, watch the video. Don't watch the video. Just go to YouTube where the video is and comment. That's where our conversation happens. I love to see comments from you guys. Uh, boost those comments up. But um, the big thing with employees and keeping them happy is when I say they don't care about your business, it's kind of true, like 100% true, where the real phrase is they don't care about your business like you do, but just that they don't care. Everybody cares about their job, right? Remember your nine to five that you had? You care if you have a job. You care that you have a paycheck, but if the place burns down, you don't care. It's the same reason that when you do have employees and they lose something, they go, I don't know, or something breaks, they go, I don't know, it was like that. No, it wasn't. It was not shattered when you got it. We would have noticed that. No, I was like that. I don't know what happened. It's because they really don't care and they really don't understand. So it's not really their fault. They don't have to care and they're not paid enough to care. So there's other ways you have to make them care about their environment. And I have to say over my 15 years of, of having a window cleaning business, we went through a lot of employees, a lot of garbage employees, but we had a lot of good ones and our crew was awesome. The thing with employees, and we're not going to talk about hiring, but you're, it's like a big net. You got to catch 10 of them before you find one good one. And then you elevate the ones that are good, the bad ones you let go, uh, or they let themselves go, just stop showing up. Um, and eventually you're left with the cream of the crop. But I can't pay my employees $50 an hour, which I wish I could because some of them are worth it and to me they're that valuable. But it just doesn't make much sense, right? So you have to do other things that are above and beyond just the money. Because here's the thing, people who make $50 an hour, if they make that for over a year, eh, it's cool that they make it, they're happy they make it, but it's not new and exciting, it's not something different. So there's a lot of other ways to keep your employees happy. And here's kind of a list of a few of them. And first and foremost, for your employees, to keep them happy, just to keep them wanting to stay there, it's going to be comfort. Comfort in your employees is huge, especially in what we do. A lot of people, a lot of people, if you're hiring, you know this 100%. Give a thumbs up on the video if you uh, know exactly what I'm talking about. But a lot of people in the interview process So why do you want to be a window cleaner? Great question. Open-ended. Let's see where it goes. Oh, uh, well, I just always wanted to work outside, outdoors. Oh, man, I'd love to work outdoors, you know. So you took in your brain the nicest day, a nice spring day, you put it in your brain and that's what you think this is. Well, if you ever worked outside, you know that there is rain and snow and bugs and thorns and bushes and spiders and bees and wasps and dog poop. And there's so many other things that you don't run into when you work in an office, when you work somewhere that a little little thing on the wall says what the temperature is, that's not the case. So comfort's huge. Now, there is comfort as far as um, what they have on and different seasons of when they work. So right now, going into winter, comfort, a few of the things are uh, gloves. Gloves are huge. Now, a lot, this time of year, we sell just tons of, hundreds and hundreds of gloves a week. Um, and the big thing that people ask is, is, okay, is that something I provide? Is that something they provide? Is it, is it even necessary? Can you even work it? Here's the thing. If an employee is, uh, comfortable, they're going to work better. They're going to work happier. They're going to work harder. They're going to do more because if they're stopping every 10 minutes to go warm up their hands that are cracked and just hurting, they're not getting much done for you anyway. And they hate life. Ah, man, I'm not doing this crap anymore. Right? So keeping them happy. Buy him some gloves. What's a pair? My favorite gloves that we sell are like 50 bucks. Okay, $50 a pair. That sounds like something, but they could have those for a whole season. 
What if you got 50 bucks a pair and you now, they wear those for five months of the year? That's 10 bucks a month, man. That's not, who, 10 bucks a month? You're getting more work than that. Gloves are super, super important. Now, cheaping out on gloves is just as bad as not getting any gloves. And it's showing them that everybody's been at the job where, oh, here you go. Here's your thing, whatever it is, fill in the blank. And it's the most cheap piece of crap. And you're like, why would they even buy this for me? Like, they don't care, right? So care. Get them some good stuff. And a couple other things that people don't really realize in the comfort side is this. This is a thermal. This is just a whatever they call it, Hanny or Henny or... It doesn't matter. I'm not in the fashion, man. But uh, getting them thermal stuff, getting them car hearts that are logoed and embroidered, getting them winter hats that are logoed and embroidered, getting them gloves. You don't have to really do that. But everything else that you're getting for them, uh, even boots. We've done boots before. Um, if you want everybody to look the same, buy them all the same stuff. It's up to you on what you want to buy, but keeping them comfortable and keeping them having the equipment that will keep them working is going to keep them happy, not just give you more productivity. So don't skimp on that side of it. Yes, your winter hat more than likely will have to buy another one next year, but sometimes you don't. Sometimes people are, oh, I lost it. Yeah, of course you did because you didn't buy it. You don't care. What does a beanie cost? Uh, embroidered beanies like 15 bucks. That's super cheap. 15 bucks, you got... Now they're wearing your logo on their head and they're staying warm, keeping them happy. So comfort's a big one. In the summertime, same thing where uh, we've done uh, Duluth uh, Trading Company pants and we've done Columbia pants, uh, shorts, I'm sorry, uh, because we wanted kind of like it to look the same and these guys were buying these weird kind of khakis, like ours was khakis and a blue shirt. So you can do, you can order specific uh, shorts so they all look right. You can get them shoes or hiking boots. You can get them uh, brimmed hats. You can get them logoed sunglasses. You can get them anything that they need to stay comfortable in the summer. And that may include getting them light shirts. Now, we had polos. Actually, WCR has them. They're like super ultra light polos. Super comfortable, but they're pricey. They're like 30 bucks a pop. But this is keeping people comfortable. If I feel like a million bucks, I'm going to act like I'm a million bucks, right? So keep them comfortable. Think of what temperatures it is pre-planned. Hey, it's going to get cold. It's going to be so cold that we can't clean at certain times. You got to keep up with that, right? So definitely keep them comfortable. Uh, another way to keep your employees happy and loving life as much as possible is perks. Now, just general perks is kind of a large category. But remember, we talked about if you can only pay somebody 20 bucks an hour, which, I, by the way, pay them as much as you possibly can, right? While well, still getting a profit and still paying yourself, of course. But there's other things that make the job worth it. Now, if they're making eight bucks an hour, uh, if you buy them some food, that doesn't really, they still make an eight bucks an hour, right? But perks include meals. Meals are big. If we're working on a project all day, I will go buy them lunch and bring it to them. Why? Because I control when they go on lunch. I know the meal that they're eating so that they're actually getting some food. I know their drinks. I know they're all that stuff. I can get them what they need, right? When I bring it to them, that means that's when they do lunch, not when they decide, right? It's also appreciative. If your boss brings you lunch on a job site, those little things like that go, that goes, that's huge. Oh man, dude, it's awesome. They didn't pay for it. It cost you all of 20 bucks, right? But it's the little things that help them. Buying the meals. We also did a Friday meal after work on Friday when all the crews got back. They had the opportunity to go to one of our stores. We did uh, up the street and we did it on barter. We just cleaned them every two weeks, I believe, or weekly. I don't remember. And they just let us eat there for free whenever. We had a tab, but I don't think we ever kept you know, totals. But we'd go there. We'd just hang out. If guys wanted to have a drink after it, it's Friday, they can. If they don't, they don't go. They don't need to. They can get a burger and a drink and we can just hang out. Not talk shop. Just talk about life. Right? Some people think that's weird. And it depends on the crew you have. Maybe you don't want to be friends with them. That's fine too. You're always going to be the boss number one, friend second. But I like to have that kind of morale. I like to have something to look forward to on a Friday also. Right? So that is a big one. Meals, bringing them together. Another thing is barbecues. If it's a summer, do a weekend. Hey, Saturday, we're going to do something. Or or Friday after work, you know, you got the grill running at the, the shop and you got steaks or something, you know. Little things like that help. Now, getting their whole family, 
that's a little bit harder. I found that to be trickier where we never even really did, uh, even our Christmas parties and all those kind of things were all just employees. Nobody brought their family because they didn't want to bring their family, I guess, which is cool. There's a different kind of connection between employees, especially which we ran two guys in a crew. We had uh, a, a crew chief and we had a tech. And those two guys worked together every single day. So those guys got pretty close. Uh, we would run competitions between crew one, two, three, four, whatever. And so there was kind of a camaraderie, right? Plus they'd razz each other because their crew was, you know, better than the other crew. And that's how they always kind of stayed in. But it built like a morale with them. And sometimes they really want to kind of do that. So perks and meals is huge. It sounds so little and it sounds so dumb. And sometimes people don't want to stay there. But if, you know, half of your staff is going to these meals, eventually all the people will slowly do that. Uh, another perk in the summer is water and Gatorade. Having that stuff ice cold and ready for them to take out is huge, right? Even if you have on the truck, you have one of those big Gatorade coolers. If in the morning before they get in, you have it filled with ice and you have it filled with water and it's loaded up on the truck, like that kind of stuff is huge. Not only does that help with productivity, right? They're working better. They're happier working because they have the stuff, but they're just happier in general. And what does water cost you? Like nothing. Bag of ice on the way to work. It's three bucks. So think about that. Another thing to do, how do you implement that with like hot chocolate in the winter or something? That's kind of a cool concept. I didn't uh, ever do that. But yeah, maybe fill up some thermoses and shoot them out with that. I don't know. Do something. But you see where the mindset is kind of going. Those are big one. Another one of perks is activities. So um, we would do, like, if guys were really talking about a movie, like, oh, man, did you see the new Jokers coming out or whatever the movie is? If they're really always talking about that, I'll bring them all to the movie. All right, guys, you guys want to go that? We'll hit that movie on Thursday night. We're, we'll go. I'll buy you guys all a movie. Like, little things like that maybe makes a big difference. We also had a ping pong table in the shop. So there was always ping pong when the guys were getting back waiting for other crews or waiting for the end of the day or whatever. Playing ping pong. We had a fridge that was in the um, uh, break room that was always filled with beer. Uh, yes, I don't know you know, if you drink or not. That's not the point. Uh, no, they weren't drinking on the job. No, they didn't drink beforehand. They're not idiots. That's not what was going on. But after work, if they wanted to crack one, awesome, fine, whatever. You know, It's just the little things like that will continually keep them happy, right? If you worked at a job, say you work at Google, they're going to have a break room that has snacks, always loaded with snacks and foods and drinks and things because they want to keep you happy. Those are the places that have ping pong, right? They have bad, or, um, <laughs> bad, bad. <laughs> they have, um, uh, uh, the little soccer guys with the foosball. Oh my gosh. Foosball, pool, whatever they have. They have those games to keep people occupied, keep them happy, let them relax for a little bit because it's valuable. They don't do it just because they, you know, have never done science on it. It's very, very valuable. But anyway, another one to think about is the workload. The workload you give them, do not work them like beasts. Now, if there is a big day, which we have big days, we have big whatevers. If you're working these guys 60 hours a week, you're going to burn them out. It's time for another crew. Well, yeah, but I'm getting slow. Yeah, but you're going to be really, really hurting when they leave. Don't overwork them. They're not a rented mule. Isn't that the saying from the 1800s? They're, they're just not. They're, they're, they're employees who need to be happy. They don't have a value. You may work 60 hours a week, but it doesn't mean that they're going to want to work 60 hours a week because they just got a job, man. So make sure that your workload is not crazy. You don't want to push them too much. Now, I know guys who have employees who want to work as much as possible. You're keeping them happy that way. Awesome right? So workload kind of changes with them. Another thing on workload is um, uh, what we would call a weekend bonus, I guess. Um, so a weekend bonus was if somebody wanted to do service with us on a weekend. We didn't work weekends. Some of you are like, what? We didn't ever work weekends. 15 years. I mean, we did a couple days here and there, but uh, we started offering... Um, premium weekend spots and if you wanted a weekend spot it was an extra $50 on the no it was extra 25 percent yeah and most of that money went to the employees we gave them a weekend bonus if you worked you actually got like time and a half on a weekend um uh, but we would also do bonuses on weekend work 
So if you work your 40 hours and you work a weekend, you're going to get time and a half. So doing a bonus on top of that is huge for them if they want to do weekends. Now, sometimes people just be like, I just don't want to work weekends. Cool. Who does? If anybody does, we'll work you on the weekend. If nobody wants weekends, we don't offer weekend work. Because I'm not going to kill those employees. I'm not going to break them down until they're not valuable to me anymore. Or they hate life and they leave. Right? So think about that. For sure. And speaking of bonuses, bonuses is one of them. Bonuses are huge. Again, you can only pay them so much money per hour. But whatever you do pay them when the time is good, when things have been crazy, maybe you give them a bonus. Now, we did two times a year bonuses. We did one in uh, the end of the year, which we considered our Christmas bonus. And then we did one in um, around 4th of July, which was our summer bonus, which... uh, the summer bonus comes out of spring. We have a killer spring. Holy cow. We killed it. Boom. Everybody gets an extra G. Just here's some money. Uh, Christmas bonus. Everybody likes that during the holidays. It doesn't matter if you uh, are uh, whatever religion you are. But that time of year when, when, when families are you know uh, hanging out a lot more, it's always nice to get money. So having a bonus... Bonus in winter or a Christmas bonus comes from a killer fall, right? So you have bonuses when you get the big surplus of money, but yet you don't have to pay them more money per hour all the time. And bonuses are nice because you can adjust them. If you had a crappy fall or you had an issue or you know you broke a bunch of glass or something and now you don't have as much profits, you can totally change that any way you want. So it really gives you kind of more flexibility, but also really, really appreciated by the guys. It's always nice when you surprise them too. Like don't tell them it's coming. Just be like, hey, here's uh, here's your bonus. Now, um, check legal liabilities and paying, you know, uh, you still have to take taxes out and all that, depending on how you have your employees done. But but that's always really uh, a big one. Uh, bonuses. Just think about bonuses uh, and try to give as much as possible on that. Um, Another way to make them feel awesome is specialized gear. Now, this kind of piggybacks, of course, on comfort, but I'm not talking about wearables. I'm talking about usables. Like, there are guys out there who are like, man, I really want that silencer belt that's out there. I saw somebody talking about it's so cool. Okay, it's $200. The bucket you're wearing is $35. I'm not buying you that, right? But if, say you give it as a gift, say you give it as a whatever, I'm going to give you that because that's what you want. How about somebody who really, really wants the trad pole? We do a lot of that. Where guys will call and they'll say, um, my guys really want this trad and I'm thinking about getting them as gifts, right? How cool is that? You could put a little label on there and all of a sudden that is your pole. Now it's still the company's property, of course, but if I give Johnny a $200 extent, uh, pole, he will guard it with his life because it's his, right? Dude, I bought this silencer. I know you wanted it. This is yours, man. If nobody else is using it, it's yours. That's huge. Those are little gifts that make them feel appreciated with still getting equipment that they're using for you. They're making you money. Employees are more valuable than anything else we have in business. Maybe maybe marketing. But anyway, keeping them happy. That little thing like that might actually do it. By the way, if you want anything, give me a call. 862-312-2026. We'll get you set up with some uh, some presents for you guys. But specialized gear is big. Specialized gear, what we would do too is that the longer somebody was there, they would have the most epic loadout of anybody because every time we would give out specialized stuff, they would get something and they had their own customer. Like the, the, the operations officer who was there the longest, he was there six years compared to the guy who just started like three months ago. Man, was it night and day. Night and day. But it showed those guys, you're valuable to me. You're valuable to me. So... Definitely, definitely think about that. And if you are uh, uh, like some of the guys out there, logo it. Logo the gear. If you're giving them something, embroider a silencer. Sweet. Uh, if you're giving them a, a pole, add a graphic. Add a, add a sticker or something to it that's got your logo on it. It's totally cool to do that because they're still getting the gear, you know? Um, 
And then uh, another part that I would do is what we call time and a half bonuses. Now that was any job that we knew was going to be a pain in the butt. I would bonus them half of their salary or half of their hourly. So not time and a half when it comes to, um, yes, you worked more than 40 hours and legally have to pay you two t- uh, time and a half. This was, we would do time and a half bonuses where they would do a project and like, oh, everybody hates this project. You do that that project. If you guys are the crew that's on it, I'm time and a half in you. And that just meant that your bonus would be 50% of your hourly. So every hour you worked, you'd made an extra 50%, which was really, really nice. Now, again, check your legal legalities, legalities, and how you, uh, uh, you know, tax that and everything. But that was really big. We did that for certain jobs. There were certain jobs where we had older customers we knew would talk. We had um, jobs that were all Frenchies and they had inside and outside. They knew they'd be there for a long time. I'm going to pay you more. That's awesome. I, I know those jobs suck. This will make it suck a little less. Right? So timing, halving them, however you want to throw out a bonus like that. People are super appreciative no matter how you do it. So um, do that out. But remember, when it all comes down to it, employees are so valuable to you. Now, the cost of hiring someone new is huge. Just that alone. If you really think about the time wasted, you're paying them an hourly rate to not create even production. They're not even making you money when they're training. And then for them to go through weeks of training to just, leave you know is big you have to have them set up on payroll so you're paying more you have to give them clothes and logo to letter lettered uniforms you have to maybe get a start another truck for them maybe you have to all that stuff goes into paying them so keeping them happy saves you so much money not even including the headache we've all had those employees that left at the wrong time they left. It was so busy, and then all of a sudden, oh, I got a job at Amazon. I'm leaving. Uh, two weeks now? No, I can't give you two weeks. I got to start right away. Uh, fine. Right? When an employee leaves and it puts you out, that is awful. That's awful. Having an employee leave. I've never had an employee leave spot on, pissed, and, and leave. I've never had that. I know a lot of you have. That puts it out even more. He's so unhappy. They're leaving right now. This second, I can't do this anymore. I'm gone. Here's your shirt. Leave and walk out. It's crazy. So keeping them happy is super, super valuable. Not only is it super valuable for that, but it builds that morale I was talking about. And uh, if anything, man, go get a ping pong table. <laughs> ping pong table was awesome. That was actually epic. We had the most awesome. We did uh, ping pong tournaments. Uh, we did them maybe every couple months, but we did these giant bracketed tournaments tournaments that were on the weekend. It was just a reason for, you know, like a weekend party, basically. Uh, but we'd have them come down. Um, we'd get a bunch of pizzas or whatever, and then we'd do these big tournaments, and we had this uh, WWE or F or whatever they're called, the wrestling belt, and uh, we changed it to ping pong, and that was the whoever won that uh, got to have that belt until the next one. So stuff like that builds morale. It builds a fun environment. If people are already working for you for the price you're paying them, they can afford life at the price you're paying them. Make it fun. Maybe somebody always will go for the next thing with more money, but if you're fun and you're an awesome place to work, people are going to be uh, sticking around with you a lot more. So, food for thought. If you have any comments or questions, go ahead and comment down below. Or, my number again, 862 312 2026. Yes, that's my cell phone. So you can text me. I get texts all the time that people just say, Jersey, everything's in my cart. You shop, you know, maybe it takes you a week to throw stuff in your cart. Make sure you're logged in so you don't lose it on the site. And then just be like, yo, Jersey, everything's in my cart. Put it through. And I'm about to give you a code for 5% off if you do that. You just got to let me know the code. Um, but do that. Big or small orders. I kind of rash you guys last week. I've seen a lot of orders come in from people who uh, I always put orders in for them they still like put their own orders in oh man let me put them in i want all of them all of the orders yes but this week's code is happy if you tell me that if you tell me happy then you will get five percent off and free shipping if you order through me and no you can't order yourself and then expect me to still give it to you 
Don't be a jerk. I had a guy who was a jerk. He was just like, you lied. No, I said you had to order through me. I put an order in. Okay, well, I'm not going to do anything now. You already paid your money. I can't. Okay, so order through me. I'm definitely, definitely available all the time. Uh, 862-312-2026. If you text me during the weekend, just uh, hang out and bear with me. My wife would kill me if I te- respond to all my texts. Sometimes it comes on Monday morning, but still, we ship Monday through Friday. So. Thank you guys for being absolutely epic. And until next week, go out there and make your employees happy, but more importantly, be epic.